أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تكاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسالون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله كونوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الحديث هدي محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد يا إكوة المسلمين يا عباد الله All thanks and praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Indeed we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek His mercy, His blessings and we beg for His forgiveness I testify to the absolute fact that there is no deity No one worthy of any deification except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For He is indeed alone and has no partners and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever he left to wonder, none can provide guidance to. And I further attest to the fact that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the last and final messenger. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالِمِينَ He was sent as a mercy, as a benefactor, as an intercessor for all creation في يوم القيامة. يا إكوة المسلمين يا عباد الله قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم في سورة النساء verse 135 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على أنفسكم أو الوالدين والأقربين إن يكن غنيا أو فقيرا فالله الله بما صدق الله العظيم والصدق رسول الله الكريم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome to the most blessed day of the week يوم الجمعة Nay, welcome to the most blessed day the most blessed hour of the most blessed day of the week this hour of Jummah precisely welcome to the best moment of the best day of the best hour this moment when the Khatib when the Imam will take his seat between the two Qutbah and you will be given the privilege to lift your hands to the heavens and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I beseech you in this moment that lift your hands and make dua today for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And I want to welcome all of you to the courtroom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, I seek the justice not of the United States, not of the Arabs, not of the European, not of the International Tribunal, but I seek the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So welcome all of you to the courtroom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the eye of justice in Al-Quran Al-Kareem in the chapter entitled The Woman, the fourth chapter of Al-Quran, yes. The chapter entitled The Woman, Surah Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the eye of justice. And if anyone can come up with a better ayah philosophy, ideology of justice that this ayah 
not only should be posted in the halls of the most preeminent law school in the world, in Harvard Law School, this I was able to manage its way to be posted on the halls of Harvard Law School. But I would like this ayah to be posted in every courtroom across the globe. Every magistrate, every lawyer, every litigator, before they commence a case, should recite this verse, this ayah, in English, in Arabic, whatever language you speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, O Yahudi, wa Nasara, wa Muslim, Mu'min, who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kunu kawwameena bil kist, be upholder of justice. Speak out against injustice. Be an upholder of justice. Kunu kawamina bil kist. Shuhada alillah. And be a witness to this injustice. Be a witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summons and cited you in Surah Al Adiyat, the 100th chapter. Yes, that you are a witness to something else also. Inna linsana li rabbihi lakanoon. Wa inna hu ala zalika la shaheed. And you're a witness to your own ungratefulness. You're a witness to your own deviant behavior. You're a witness to your own injustice against your own self. Now be a witness to justice according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa law ala anfusikum. And if that justice is against your own self, uphold justice. Awil walidaini. And if that justice against your own parents, seek justice for them here before they have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the courtroom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that inevitable day, that day of Yawmul Hisab. Iktarab al nas Hisabuhum wa hum fi ghaflati muqridun. Or Hisab or accountability. Be people of Muhasib. Do an audit of yourself here before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala audit you in the courtroom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the evidence on that day will be very strong against you. There is no misconception of the evidence. The video that you will see that document your life in details will be in the highest quality in that day. Your IQ will not be of a genius. There will be no Einstein on that day. Everyone will have a clear understanding equal to what they are seeing on that day. walidaini if it's against your own parents. Wal aqrabina and if it's against your own friends and associates, your kinsmen, your tribesmen, the CEO of your company, you speak out for justice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In yakun ghaniyan aw fakiran and don't let justice pass because of the wealthy. Not because you have money, you will be able to buy justice in the courtroom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe perhaps in this courtroom, in the courtroom across the country, across the globe, maybe you can go to Sutphin Boulevard and you can pay some money and you can buy justice. But not in the justice of Al-Quran al kareem in the justice of the best of judge that should give you comfort on that day of Yawm al-Hisab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presiding in front of the courtroom. The best of judge. إِنْ يَكُنْ غَنِيًا أَوْ فَكِيرًا فَاللَّهُ أَوْلَى بِهِمَا Don't take this into your own hands because one is rich and one is poor. You will pass them over. فَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا الْهَوَى And do not use your own whims and conjectures when it comes to justice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not use your own opinion. Do not use influences. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in tu'li. You know, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَلْوُوا Follow justice, follow the evidence to where it leads. وَإِن تَلْوُوا You know, تَلْوُوا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, use this word when you use tilawat al-Qur'an. You follow the letter to the letter, the word to the word in al-Qur'an al-Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say here, wa in talbu, and follow the evidence for where it leads you. Follow the evidence for where it leads you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالشَّمْسِ وَدُهَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا And one follow the other. For follow to the T, what the moon follows the sun. Follow the evidence for where it leads you. But before this courtroom calls into session, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare all of us. You know, you have a big case and you go to the lawyer's office and they brief you about the evidence and you review and you review and you review the answers and he review the questions and you make sure that you understand the questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare all of us for that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how will he prepare us for that day he says he said before you enter into the courtroom he will shake the earth vehemently in a violent shake this shake is different from all the earthquake if you come and tell me did you hear about the earthquake the next question i will ask you where did it happen in haiti in california in japan no one will have to ask that question because wherever you are you will feel that shake you in gaza you will feel that shake you in philistine you will feel that shake you in saudi you will feel that shake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare us There's no other ayah like this in the Quran Even phonically, even in English You can see that this ayah is con This connotation of this ayah Is showing something like it's, it's not a push Zil It's zil zalaha You can feel like a reverberation In the ayah itself Iza zul zil zalaha Wa akhrajatil ardu afkalaha and this earth will regurgitate what burden it's carrying. You are a burden into this earth. Imam Shafi says so beautifully. He says, if this earth can speak, this earth will say, what a wicked people is walking and traversing above me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرْحَةً إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّا مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ Do not carry yourself on this earth as if you're going to render this earth asunder. You walk with your sudur, with your chest up high, in this state of arrogance, like you see the displacing in the Middle East. Arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِكَيْ لَا تَعَسَوْا أَلَا مَا فَاتَكُمْ That this is the most despicable sight in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِكَيْ لَا تَعَسَوْا أَلَا مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَهُ بِمَا آتَاكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّا مُكْتَالٍ فَقُورٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't traverse this earth with haughtiness. Because when He tries you and He take away that power that you're seeking, He take away that domination, that, 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 you know, that zeal, that greed that you're seeking, you will not be able to deal with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare us. Yes, no matter how powerful you are, when this earth swallow you, it will spit you out back. The leaders of the state of causing all these, you know, when, it, when this situation happened that we see in Bosnia, we see the world protest all over that this will never happen again in the mid-90s. We will not see the mass raping, the state-sanctioned rape. We will not see it again. Few years after, the war protests again. Where's justice? We see in Mogadishu what happened. The war came out again. It will never happen again. We see they came out again when it happened recently in Rohingya, where our daughters are giving birth to children in the camp of the Cox Valley from rape. It will never happen again. I was in front of the United Nations two times. Never happen again. We see what's different about this situation in Palestine. It didn't happen and we protest and some kind of situation, solution come to the situation. It's going on for 70 years. 
we seek the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al Quranul Kareem, in Surah Al Hajj, verse 39 and 40, you talk about non violence. When you say non violence, what is synonymous with that word is who? MLK, Martin Luther King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. When you hear non-violence, it's synonymous with Gandhi. But let the history speak of who is the most preeminent in non-violence. Our beloved Prophet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after fierce persecution, not only on him, but his family. Quarantine we talk about. He was socially and economically isolated with his family. His daughter Fatima was born into that isolation. No one were able to trade, give them food, communicate, medical help, medical aid. They were confiscated, they were, they were quarantined in that area. That from that isolation, the demise of his beloved wife Khadija, she succumbed to that isolation, starvation, malnutrition. The Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his daughter Zainab, lost miscarriage from the persecution of the Quraysh. Fierce persecution. When he migrated to Medina, it continued. It actually got worse. Here is this man, the Arab arrogance and ego that we see even to today. This man is saying that our son should believe in one God. And they left with him and they went to Medina. This man is saying the black is equal to the white, to the Arabs. Bilal has rights. This man is saying woman can, be, can inherit rather than be inherited. We have to take him out once and for all. In the Battle of Badr, I want you to listen to this subtle point of the Quran. The Prophet وسلم, 70 times in Al Quran Kareem before this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It's about you, have patience. They threw the entrails on your, chest, on your head while you're making sajjah, have patience. When it's about you, have patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He ordered the Prophet of Allah to stand up for the first time against aggression. When he ordered Allah, the Prophet وسلم, he ordered the Prophet وسلم, He said, an order is given to you now to stand up against aggression that the help of Allah is with you. I want you to listen. This is not about Islam against Judaism. We are ordered in Al Quran Al Kareem that we should believe in Surah Al, -Al, -Al, -Al Imran, the ayah about the family of Al Imran, the Jews, the Bani Israel, Alif Lamim. That we should believe that in Al Quran, Al Tawrat, Al Injil, we are commanded to believe in these scriptures because all these scriptures we are what? Ahl al Kitab. We are not Ahl al Kutub. It is not one more. We are people of books. We are people of one book because the message that came to Musa is the same. This courtroom that the Yahudi will come, the Nasara will come, it is the Prophet of God, Musa. It is the Prophet of God, Isa. It is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, will be in this courtroom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this ayah that when the order is given to, to the Prophet وسلم, to, to stand up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Udina lilladina yuqataluna bi annahum zulimu. That this zulm, this transgression, you must stand up now against this transgression. My dear brothers, what is this transgression? I want you to listen what the pluralistic what the Prophet وسلم, came for. He didn't came for the Arabs. This might be surprise you, the first order to engage to stop aggression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladheena ukhriju min diyarihim bi ghayri haqq illa an yakulu rabbuna Allah That the reason why they're evicted from their homes 
the reason why they are evicted from their homes it is there is no just reason alladhina ukhriju min dirari diyarihum bi ghayri haqq illa an yakunu rabbuna allah except that they say allah is their lord there's a subtle point in this ayah there's a very subtle point of this ayah is talking about the context of standing up for the first battle the battle of badr and this ayah is this of an ayah it's talking about the situation and this is the beauty of al quran al kareem it is addressing the situation that the only reason illa an yaqulu rabbuna allah that they say their lord is allah but not only the muslims say their lord is allah listen to this point allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walawla dafqu allah an-nas that he often used one people to expel another people in order to keep the name of allah whether it's a secular state that using two religion you will find that allah addressed the situation in very fine and subtlety in al quran al kareem allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the order is given to rasulullah to stand up for what dafullahi an-nas ba'dahum bi ba'di lahuddimat now this may surprise you what i'm about to say and you may wonder that is this in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the prophet stand up ba'dahum bi ba'din lahuddimat sawami'u to protect the monasteries yes the monasteries where the monks pray this is the pluralisticness of islam this is justice of al quran al kareem allah is telling rasulullah stand up to stop the aggression was sama wa wa ba'dihum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says was salawatu wa bi'un and the churches yes the churches stand up to protect the monastery so wa mi'u wa bi'un the churches was salawatu and stand up to protect the synagogues yes it is mentioned in quran the synagogues stand up to protect the synagogues was sama sawami'u wa bi'un was salawatu wa masajid stand up to protect them because when you are trying to establish a secular state even if against islam it is against all religion who call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a very dangerous thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says stand up to protect the monastery so wa amiu wa bi'un was salawatun wa masajidu yudhkaru fi hasmullah kathira because the name of allah is mentioned in all of them allah is preparing us before this day in the courtroom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says idha zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha wa akhrajatil ardu athqalaha wa qala al insanu ma laha and when we get expelled from this earth we will be in this state of sakarat you remember we were in a state of sakarat on the other end just before we enter into the qabr we were in this state of sakaratul maut what is this sakaratul maut Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this state is when you become incoherent it's like a state of intoxication it is in a state of daze it is in a state when Allah breaks down your faculty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you've seen it many times your loved ones when they're lying in the bed and their soul is about to extract extricate from that body to disassociate from the body what happens you see that person is lying in the bed and you're reciting surah yasin you reciting surah yasin and that person is reciting with you and then what happened something amazing happened allah breaks down these senses one after the other and he breaks them down which one goes first you go into the hospitals and you see this all the time you talking to a patient the first of the senses to go that person is saying qul huwa allahu ahad i love you oh my wife i am sorry i have this small window to say i'm sorry 
to you before the soul leave the body. The first to go is speech. That's scientific. The first to go of the senses of the faculty is speech. You'll see that person, oh, Allah. That's it. Can't anymore. But you will be able to listen. He will be able to listen and he would wish that what you are reciting, he would be wishing that I should have recited this when I was alive, when I could recite. I, could, I should have said to my loved one who's standing around me, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Allah will make sure that he witnesses his speech is gone. And then the next that will go, you will see that his hearing. He will wish he could continue to hear. He will only see your mouth moving. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Oh, Dad, I love you. But he can't respond. Mom, I love you. No response because the faculty of hearing is gone. And what next go? We know. All of us know. The eyes. Many of us have to close the eyes. In the other end, when the zilzal, what happens is that you will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he, the earth spits out all of us, we will say, the insan will say, what's going on? As we're coming from this state, we're coming the reverse now. Instead of losing our faculty, we start to gaining our faculty. It's coming back to us. We gain our senses to witness the courtroom of Allah. Yes, to witness. And the great Akbar, the angel will come and he will escort us. Like when you go to a concert and he will take you to that position. You're sitting there and then when you look, that's my neighbor. I remember him. He used to live next door to me down the road in Barbies, in Queens, in Liberty Avenue. That's my classmate. My mom is in front of me. The great Akbar is about to show. This would not be a 90 minute Hollywood movie. It will not be a three hour Bollywood movie. It will be a detailed movie that will be seen by all of us. Your mom will see it. You will see it. Shafiq, who used to come and give these khutbah? This is what he used to do afterwards? This is what he did then? The evidence will be strong against us in that courtroom. The tyranny that's happening in Philistine, they will have to enter into this courtroom. The allies, the enablers, is worse than the one that who pulled the trigger. You will see the details, what you did, when you did, where you did. Your brother will see, your wife will see what you did when you left the home. This akhbar, this great news, like I was in Times Square last night, and you see all these monitors, you see all these advertisements. In 4K, streaming, we all will be there. This great akhbar will be in front of us. Yawma idhin tuhaddithu akhbar. Yawma idhin yasduru nasu ashtata liraw a'malahu. Subhanallah. Allah will present our a'mal. We will see it in front of us. If it's 4K now, whatever the technology is there before the day of Hisab, that will be the technology there. That courtroom, you would see vividly who pulled the trigger that took that little child in Gaza. The finger will speak. I pulled the trigger. I pressed the button for the bomb. That the father says, bring my Yamla, let me kiss her before you put her in the morgue. Bring her. There will be no messing with the evidence. Bring my son, Amir. Listen to the name of these children. Let me kiss him before you put him in the coal box. Bring my son, Muhammad. Name your children good names. Listen to the names of these children. This is why the Philistine, they're unique. They're a unique people. 
They're the pulse of this ummah. Bring my son, Muhammad, let me kiss him. Bring my next son, Islam, let me kiss him before you put him in the morgue. The finger will speak in this courtroom. And if the finger is not strong enough of an evidence, the feet will speak that I was in Hebron. I entered into that house. The sniper who testified that my job was to stand at the mountain of Hebron and look at the homes and just pick a house randomly, which one we're going to use tonight as a base to use a sniper on the other people. We will take the family, put them in all one room, and then we will use that house. The feet will speak. You will see it. And if this feet is not strong enough evidence, Allah will instruct the earth. Speak where he was. Speak what you were doing there. Speak what you were doing in the courtyard of Al-Aqsa. This place that imagine, subhanAllah, that Sulaiman, you know, they talk about human rights. Human rights. What was not a right 40 years ago, this deviant behavior, the people of loot, it was in the medical book as a disease, a deviant behavior. Now it's a right. It's a right. And if you have a problem with it, you are wrong. What is to say in 40 years that pedophilia wouldn't be a right? A'udhu Billah. Incest wouldn't be a right. You talk about human rights. You ask PhD scientists from Harvard, they will say, let me tell you, forget about human rights. Ask them to define what a human is. Tell them, define to be what a human being is. They will say a human being is a set of protein and amino acids that come together into some process and it forms a cell and this cell evolves into an amoeba and it evolves into a homo sapien and it evolves into a monkey and you evolve into a human being. Tell me which monkey had left a book for mankind. Which monkey? You're telling me that Rasulullah evolved from a monkey? You tell me Musa, Isa? We use 11% of our brain right now. We see in this world when a man can use more than 11% of the brain with Allah's permission. Isa, where he uses his brain, by the mercy of Allah, was able to give life to the dead. Human rights, according to the definition of Allah, what is a human being on this earth? You're a vice chairman of Allah. You're a representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're the best of creation. The problem is that if you can't define what a human being is, how can you talk about rights? How can you talk about rights? On this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will see. You will see the lie that you told, but not only that. He says you will see the fruit of your a'mal. Meaning you will see how many lives that lie destroyed. How many lives, how far it extends to families upon families. How many people you hurt from this hasad in the masjid. How many children, how many generations you have destroyed for the past 13 years. Any child who born into Syria has never been exposed to any formal education an entire generation after generation is destroyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will not only see your action you will see the consequences the effect of this action how far it goes may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our film that when our parents are sitting they can be proud that is my son I didn't know that is what he did may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our hisab on that day, a hisab that is pleasing to us and pleasing to our family, pleasing to our parents, pleasing most of all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Huwa al-lazhi la ilaha illa huwa al-malik al-kuddus. As-salamu al-mu'minu al-muhaymanu al-azizu al-jabbaru al-mutakabbir. Subhanallahi. Subhanallah, Amma Yushukun. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day, despite all this gloom and this movie that you will see and this documentary that you will see that you wrote in the Qabr, Allah instructed the angels instruct to write and remind you to write this script. This script was written in the Qabr and made into the film on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on this day, you will see 99 of the 100 mercy of Allah on this day. The mercy, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَى لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَسْتُرُ النَّاسُ عَشْتَاتًا لِرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Allah will show us our good amal, the mercy of Allah first. Before He show us all the bad that we've done. We pray on this day of Hisab. We pray that all those oppressors, all those who are theorizing all over the world, in the Muslim world and in the non-Muslim world. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet, stand up for justice for all of humanity. The people of the churches that was burning in the south. Did any Muslim stood up? The Quran is telling us stand up. Did any Muslim spoke out against it? No. The Prophet of Allah spoke out against the monastery to protect the monastery to protect the churches, to protect the synagogues, to protect the masjid, because all of those places, the name of Allah is mentioned, and Allah's name will forever mention, no matter who or how big the, the tyrant is. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring justice to the injustice that we're seeing right in front of our eyes. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us as a voice to the voiceless. For our brothers and sisters and our children who have been massacred just for what may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad kama salaita ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim innaka hamidun majid allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim innaka hamidun majid allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man afayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وكنا شر ما قديت وإن تقضي ولا يفعل عليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك إباد الله